cannot replace the screen time. Yep. You know, I just, I, agree. It, it yeah. just uh, I wish there was a way, but it's just such an individual thing. You have to, you have to figure out what hurts, what doesn't work for you. Hey everyone, lead trainer with Stacks to Trade, Tim Bone here, back with the Trader Spotlight, going over a lot of you know up and coming traders, and, and today we've got one that's been around a while, but uh, has a similar story to many of these traders where they were looking for something else, um, looking for something that would kind of take them away from that nine to five grind, and they were willing to put in that time and that effort to pursue this, and that's one of the biggest things that I take away from, from our guest today, Rowan Wolf. I mean, this guy, nobody put in the effort, nobody put in more work than him, and it's translated into success. And I think that, you know, trading gets this kind of bad rap where people think it's easy, or they look at it like a get-rich-quick scheme, and it isn't. It might be, especially, you know, trading like this. I mean, sometimes you'll get lucky, and you'll get, you'll get some stock that's bought out or something like that. But traditionally, real trading might be one of the hardest things you ever do and might be the most extreme exact opposite of a get-rich-quick scheme there is. So I'd like to welcome Roland Wolf. Welcome back, Thanks, Roland. thanks for yep. having me, Tim. Yep. Good to see you again. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we just kind of want to start out at the beginning. Um, you know, go, go back. Many of the viewers out there are maybe watching this from work or, or whatever, and they're like, man, this isn't what I want to do. What yeah. were you doing? What kind of got you started down that path of day trading? And, and what, what was the, the catalyst, I guess? Yeah, so. the, the catalyst was actually my daughter being born, my, okay. second, my second kid. Um, I had a decent job. I was working in a family business, thinking about going to law school. Okay. Um, and I'm not, I wasn't the best in school. You know, I wasn't the intellect thing. It was just a concentration thing. Yep. You know, I ADD. Well, OCD. I think, you know, it's interesting you say that because it's like it's such a recurring theme and it's similar to my story. I mean, my grades were, were bad. I mean, average or below average probably. But it wasn't because, I mean, I, I loved learning. Loved. I was reading books in high school and stuff. But it just wasn't intellectually stimulating. And right. I think that's, I think that's why so many traders have that similar story. Yep is you know trading hey there's it is intellectually stimulating i mean that's the biggest thing so anyway go ahead yeah go no ahead. it is but it's extremely i mean always something new always, always something, something yeah. new and that's what i it's you know i talked about it like golf or any really difficult you know solo sport where you have to to learn something that is basically impossible yep yep <laughs> you know i mean trading is you can't master it yep. you know and the second you think that you've got it mastered it'll kick you right in the ass yep so yeah, no no one's ever shot an eighteen right. on a PGA course. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I mean, and that's so for me, you know that you know, I love the fact that that's what it is yep. because I get bored easily. Yep. And that you know I've picked up so many things, guitar and all this stuff, but I just get bored eventually. <laughs> that's just kind of my personality. Yep. But with uh, so I had the daughter. She you know had just been born, and I'm thinking, okay, so I either got to go to law school. But if I, you know, that made me want to kill myself. Right. The thought of going to law school made me want to shoot myself. Right. Head. That's how much I did. And you've got a baby at home. Yeah. I mean, it's like, okay, you know, see a seven, see you when you're seven. Yeah, yeah exactly. When you're, when you're going to first grade. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know, I had the daughter and I had a couple long-term investments. Like during that time, I had a $800 uh, Capital 360, uh, one of the, the old school brokers. Yep. Um, and I doubled it. I oh. bought Barrett Gold. I'll never forget. Barrett okay. was the first stock I bought, Barrett Gold. Which is still around today. Which is still, still around. still a penny stock. Even. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it doubled in the span of about a year, right around the time when my daughter was born. So I was like, wow, like that worked. You can't actually make money. It was kind of my first four way, foray. The funny part about that is I picked those stocks from like an online heat meter. Okay. I put in a, top, a cap of five because I know I don't have that much capital. What's right. the cheapest stocks I can buy? Bear Gold was cheap. I put half of my money into that and it doubled. So, okay. so that was kind of just like the catalyst uh, outside of my daughter. And then I'm like, okay, how do I take these returns that I just made but do it faster? Right. That was it. I and mean, more. Probably. That thought, yep. how yep. can I make these kind of returns but faster? Yep. That was it. That was the catalyst. Uh, quick Google search later. Yep. And, you know, I found Tim. Um, Tim Sykes. Tim yep. Sykes, yep. you know, and yeah, just signed up immediately for Penning Stocking Silver. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had done some research, don't get me wrong, you know, sure. a couple, I'd spent about a couple weeks looking at every YouTube video I could find, all that stuff. Um, settled with Tim, joined Penny Stocking Silver, and that was the start. The okay. next day, I had put 
Uh, that same, I doubled the bear gold. I took so about sixteen hundred. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I took that and put that into an E Trade account. Okay. Um, I didn't know what. I didn't know about E-Trade Pro. I didn't know about pl like platforms or scanners. Um, and then I went into the chat and the next day someone's like, oh, NAVB. And I'm like, oh, sweet, bought it online, just yeah. like on the site and just sure. kept clicking refresh as the numbers <laughs> yeah, were moving. Yeah. And then I was like, hey guys, I'm up 30%, what did I do? And Tim's like, that's probably best case scenario. And I took it off and I was like, trading's awesome. Yeah, it's so easy right? too. Yeah, it's yeah. so easy. We're not, didn't even have real time quotes. No, didn't nothing. Even probably, probably no didn't have clue. a chart. Probably didn't have no a chart, right? no yeah. charts, yeah. Just, just the number, <laughs> just the number. But I made 30 something percent on my first trade yep. in the span of 20 minutes or something. <laughs> and that hooked. You were sure. Completely hooked. That being that said, that was like mainline and heroin yeah. at that point. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like going to the casino, sitting at a slot machine and pressing the button and 10K. Yep, yep. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things that uh, obviously that was the beginning and I was in for a lot of work. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just didn't know yep, yep. how much. Um, and yeah, it's been a whirlwind since then. Maybe. So, so talk about, you know, that, that, that kind of, as I mentioned in the introduction, talk about that process, you know. So now you're hooked. But like you said, you didn't even, I mean, you weren't, you didn't even have a chart. You didn't even have real time, probably wasn't even real time data. Nope. You know, so, so, so now you begin, what was your process of learning? Yeah, so. so my original plan signing up was, okay, I can copy Tim's trade. Sure, which just, everybody. Which is normal. Yep, um, even though he tells you not he to. He tells you not to. Yep, yep. You'll, 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 All if, the time. Yeah, if, if, you're, if you're looking at like the recommended videos as you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably a Tim Sykes video saying, don't follow my alerts. Right. But anyway. <laughs> yes, no, and that's what happened. You know, I was, just, I was definitely, my plan was pad my account with his trades while I learned. So I okay. wasn't planning on, you know, just copying Tim's trades. But I figured I can pad my account as I learn, and then once I really get a grip on it, I can really start going. And I think I lost the next 10 trades in a row yep. copying his <laughs> trades. Um, obviously, no plan, no clue what I was doing. And the truth is, for it took a long time to be comfortable trading yep. at all. Yep. Um, it's you know I have to go back to think about that now, but it was definitely you know when I speak with people, I can relate. It's uh, it's. It's tough, yep. you know, trying to catch spikes and like, you know, you're always missing runners and, and uh, yeah, it was a rude awakening. Right. Definitely a rude awakening. Took uh, months of beating my head up against the wall to decide, okay, I should probably invest in something else. Try to figure out how to, uh, what am I doing wrong? Right. You know, every, you know, it's just like, you may think you're getting it for a week and then it's just gone. Right. And you have no <laughs> clue or you give back all the gains that you just made in one trade and, uh, risk reward was a foreign concept to me, you know. <laughs> what did keep me safe through that crazy period was Tim's number one rule. Yep. Cut losses quickly. Right. You know, that was it. That is, I took that to heart and my rule was basically trades went against me and I cut them. Yep. So I didn't lose much. It kept me safe in the beginning as I learned. And that's, that's a, you know, I'll, I'll let you finish, but that's again, yeah. that's a huge takeaway because at the beginning you're going to make every mistake, every mistake, you're going to make it over and over again. But you've just, you got to stick around because if you're gone in a month, you know, if, if you make that or $100 loss, $1,000 loss, or God forbid, a $10,000 loss, and you're done in a month, you'll never get, you know, you, you're done. You, you know, you, you can't, you, it's just a process and it's a journey and you have to stick around. So yeah. that is the biggest thing. As you're screwing up over and over and over again, 10 losing trades in a row, those have to be $100 losses. If they were $1,000 losses, I mean, I don't know what your account was at the time, but you're probably out of the game and you're done and you're not here today. No, so. the, those losses, I think I, I'd have to go back. But, I think they were $10 losses. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You know, they were, I mean, I, when it said cut quickly, I was cutting really quickly. Yep, well, which, yeah, exactly. And the, and the truth is that stuck through yep. the, my whole trading career. So, I mean, you know, I've taken some bigger losses, but for, you know, user error or something sure. like that, or you just get caught up in some really bad beat. Yep. You know what I mean? Not necessarily my fault, but that's what happens. Yep. We're, we're trading. Yep. Essentially, we're still gambling the second you put your money into that stock. You know, it's it's going to go up or down. We yep. don't know. Yep. So, so, I mean, you know, it's, it's definitely was the most, and still, I think, the most important thing to this day that just is ingrained in me. Yep. Which I'm lucky like that. Some people, I talk to a lot of people who can't cut. Yep. And they're, what do I do? I can't cut. And it's not a problem. Or, or the I worst have. thing, they're adding to losers. Oh, you know, yeah. As, 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 oh, as, for sure. Because <laughs> it was at three and now it's at one, so yeah. I can't go much lower. Exactly. So, yeah, that game. But um, yeah, it just took, it took a while to get over that, uh, to get through that, you know, through that period. 
Um, and had I not been cutting quickly, following that rule religiously, there's no way I'd be here today. Yep. I didn't have a lot of capital to begin with. Um, like I said, I put that doubled account into an account, and then I s was siphoning away a little bit of paychecks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I put a, some, a couple pieces of a couple paychecks in, because my wife and I and our kids were basically living paycheck to paycheck at that okay. time. Yep. Um, you know, we weren't hurting ter terribly. We now, do you, fine, do you think that, you know, do you think that that's... Do you think that that was a positive with cutting the losses, do you think? You know, yeah, because it was. You, because you knew that, you know, it's like if I blow up this account, you know, you know, again, I got a family, I right. got a wife, and so. I knew it would probably, if I blew that original account, I'd either not be able to trade again or it would just take a while to save more money. Sure, and, you okay. You know, I'd probably go through that process. Um, so, yeah, the cutting losses quickly, I mean, there, you can't replace that. Yep. You know, and when people tell me they have issues with that, I say, well, set a stop then. Yep. You have to. Yep. If, if you cannot manually control your position and get out, then take it out of your hands. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? Which, which keep in mind, every broker I know of, every broker should give you that ability when you enter that position. I mean, especially if you're struggling with that, as soon as you enter, put that stop in and hands off, you know, and it just let it stop you out because that's a good way to build habits too. Now, at some point, you got to take, you know, you got to take the training wheels off, but as you're building that discipline, you can just set that mechanical stop ideally at a, you know, a support or a resistance level or a failed breakout. You should put it at a good level, but just set it mechanically and take your hands off. Right. Yep. So. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's I've actually done that in the past. No, I did I have a I had a couple periods where I was was letting losses go a little bit. Yep. Um, it was hurting me a little bit, and I'm like, what are you doing? And, <laughs> I, and I was like, you know what? Screw it, I'm gonna set a stop for the next couple of weeks. Yep. And that's what I did. I just, for a couple of weeks, put stops in, and I just. And it's amazing, you know, to me, like, it's, it's amazing how good it feels to like stick to that plan, stick to that stop. And it is, it's, like, it's yeah. the best, you know, yeah, and I. <laughs> Everybody and I, thinks, oh, losing is terrible, but as you as you get more experience and you get it, and you take those big losses, as we all have, it's funny how relieving it is, even when you set that mechanical stop, you're just like, I'm out, yeah. I'm like, it's, and, then, and then it fails or whatever, and you're like, man, that, that feels good, and I think that's a good way to build good habits. Yeah, it is, and uh, for patience too, I'll yep. say that's a, the only time I usually use stops now is if I really wanna be patient, yep. and what I do is I don't look at it. Yep, yep. You know, if I'm sitting there watching a one minute. Longer term holds and stuff, yeah. Yep. So what I, my secret, because people are like, what's the secret? I'm like, I set a stop and I go golf. Yep, yep. You know, if Love I have it. high conviction that this, you know, and everything is looking like I sh we should, should get into the afternoon and maybe yep. tomorrow, then that's the game for me. Try, like, do, take it out of my hands as much as I can. And the beauty of that is, again, you know, it also, keep in mind, this works both ways because that also keeps, you know, a lot of new traders, they struggle. That's the way it is. So, so what happens I see over and over again is they take those, they take the gains too quickly too. For where sure. Where it's like they see green and it's like, oh my God, I'm green, get me out. And then the stock continues to grind higher all day. It gaps up the next right. day. And meanwhile, they took a $10 gain and it could have been a hundred or a thousand or whatever. So what I love about that strategy is, you know, you might come back in the afternoon and it might be above your goal. You know, if it totally. closes at the high of the day and now you're like, well, shit close the high day, I'll gap this overnight, you know, so. It's funny, it is funny like that, and what I'll do is throughout the round, because the round takes about four hours, yep. I'll check the chart. Sure, yep. Temp, you know, once in a while, but I, but most of the, but I'm mostly trying to not look, because yep. the, that was the goal, <laughs> and I'll know if I get stopped out, because my phone, which is usually in my pocket, will start vibrating, yep. yeah. <laughs> and it's either my wife, yeah. or it's, I got stopped out, <laughs> you know? And and that's fine, I'm, you know, I'm peaceful with that. It's, it's so much easier. Um, the one minute chart can really mess you up. Oh yeah, no doubt. You know, and yep. people and people just get so sucked into it. Mm -hmm. So I try. I my remember best. this is my, one of my favorite stuff, and I'm not sure if it's still there in Think or Swim, but I remember at one point when I was getting started, they had like a, a, a I think, and they might still have it. They have like some sort of like tick chart that's even shorter than a one minute. <laughs> And I thought that that was like a solution. Yeah, I was like, totally. well, that's what's, that's what's better than one minute yeah. chart? A, a, five seconds. A five second chart. You know, that, that's even better. And I, and I went like a, a week or two thinking that, oh, this was, you know, hey, if I can see it shorter, yeah. that's better. You know, so yeah. <laughs> so, no, it is. It yeah. is. But, but for me, shorter just gets you so sucked into micro. Yep. Micro, which price action is important, obviously. But I mean, for me, it's always macro. Yep. You know, that's, and that has kind of, you know, goes through what I trade and when and how. It's always macro picture. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? It's a, uh, and as long as I can keep that in mind, it'll keep me from getting too sucked into just one minute. Crap. So one thing I want to kind of jump back to is, you know, again, most, most 
viewers are, are probably struggling. That's why they're looking up trading videos on YouTube. Again, back to the journey a little bit. I, mean, I remember the story. So you're learning, okay, you know, you know, tell me about that study period where, again, you're yeah. watching, you're studying 18 hours a day so bad, like your eyes went bad or it something. It did, yeah. No, so, so, t- so take me, and now I want to, the reason I want to go back there is back to what I introed with. This ain't easy, okay? And if you think it's easy, pursue something else. Pursue basket weaving or something, okay? So tell me about that kind basket of Basket weaving is probably hard. Well, there you go. There probably <laughs> just, is. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, it was... You know what? I saw a speech from Alex Twenty One. Okay, from yep. Greg. Yep. And it was at one of Tim's conferences, and he was talking about being a professional. Yep. That's what it was, and that you know, and that resonated with me so much from soccer. Yep. I was like, well, what did I do to be better than most of my mm-hmm. peers at soccer? I put in more time. Than exactly. Yep. I put in the time before harder, they trained better, and yep. after. Yep. Yep. Same. Same story. Um. I was, and and there I was talking about Kobe. Kobe, that was Kobe's thing. Like yep. if he he woke up at four and practiced before high school, and he, and like the the separation during that initial part was not great. He was still pretty much the same as his peers, but over years of time, those extra three hours that compound oh, yeah. day after yep. day after day, that next thing you know, he's Black Mamba doing his thing. Over exactly. There. Yep. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's not rocket science. How to shorten your learning curve? You have to spend more time. Yep. Yep. Uh, that was a big key for me. So 2017 meant. Uh, particularly after I watched that, I ended up joining the challenge uh, with Tim. I ended up um, getting access to all of the information yep. Yep. that they have. Uh, per- I was particularly interested in seeing all of Gritani's yep. webinars and all that stuff. Um, but being a professional meant, okay, I need to put in more hours. Right. You know, I need to, my, my process before that was just like wake up right before the market open and go <laughs> yep. try to catch a morning spike. Yep, yep, That was yep. it. Or know? hopefully there's an alert. Yeah, you know? hey, there's an alert well, or man, something. Man, if there's an alert, I can make quick 200 bucks or oh, something. Yeah, yeah. And I used to jam music right before the open <laughs> and I would get amped. <laughs> nice, awesome. <laughs> just amped. Um, and it, it wasn't, it was fun. Yep. It was exciting, but it wasn't uh, profitable, Yep. you know? So, so for me, it meant a lot of work uh, going through everything. Yep. I combed the internet. It wasn't just Sykes' stuff. Um, I've checked out every service out there, all of their stuff, pretty yep. much. Most of it. Well, right, right. You know, there's Within some stuff I don't have to look at. Sure. <laughs> but, but, you know, I combed everything I could find. Um, and a lot of it, obviously, I was spinning my wheels. There's a lot of info that wasn't necessarily applicable to what I do. Sure. Um, but it's info. It's in the bank. It's in my knowledge bank. Um, and that, and I just got into the habit of being up at like three thirty or four, yep. and I got into the habit of just working my ass off all day. Yep. You know, um, little hacks because obviously I had kids. Sure. Now I have three, uh, but at that time with the two, it was you know studying in the car. Yep. Um, so normally my commute home would take about twenty minutes. At that time, it would take at least an hour. Right. <laughs> and my wife would often catch me driving in circles around the house, like around the neighborhood, that kind of thing, uh, because I needed that. I know what I needed to do, which was like spend the whole year, no friends, no drinking. I didn't party. Um, I was behind my computer all day long. Yep. You know, if it wasn't watching price action or trading, it was watching guys. I'm, I'm writing that. If I remember that story right, like your, your vision even went a little. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> so I thought I had 20-20 vision my whole life. Okay. <laughs> and then not till trading and sitting behind my computer all day. Uh, after a while of that grind, my eyes started not bleeding, but they would just be red. Like, <laughs> like they would hurt. Let's not, go with the bleeding. That sounds yeah, cool. No, I mean they, they were like explosive bleeding. Yeah, no, they weren't explosively <laughs> bleeding, bleeding, but there was no white to my really? eye, and wow. they were. It looked like I had full blown pink eye in both eyes, oh, like God. really bad case of it. So I had to go to the eye doctor, who said, "Yeah, you're just sitting there too long behind yeah, your computer, staring, at staring with your." He goes, "You need to blink." Right. <laughs> <laughs> you need to blink more. He gave me some, and then he told me my eyes weren't perfect. He gave me some glasses, which right. help actually. I wear glasses when I trade, for that reason. Sure, <laughs> they help a little bit, but. Now it's, you know, now it's not so, it's not so much like that. Right. You know what I mean? I know exactly what I'm looking well, for. Well, but again, that, and, and that's where I wanted to go next. I mean, because you put in that time, you put it, I mean, again, it's, a lot of this is front loaded. I mean, and, and, and if you've watched these interviews, uh, you know, the, if you, if you check out the Steady Trade podcast, I mean, a lot of this we talk about, it's, it's very front end loaded. And if you're willing to put in that time in the front end, then I, then you don't have to put the time in the back end. So Let's kind of progress now to where you're at today. I mean, we're recording yeah. this in 2019. What? Um, give me an example of like a, of like a day. Okay, now you've st- you know in theory you've probably put in your 10,000 hours yeah. plus. 
okay, what's a, what's a day as a full-time day trader like for you? Yeah, a day so. for me, um, I'm up at four, yep. uh, similar to you, I believe. Yep. Beautiful. Uh, yes, yep. it's uh, uh, the most productive time of the day yep. for me, honestly. Yep. Yep. Up before especially, the enemy, as Jack yes, Willink would exactly. say. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm there, <laughs> and I'm there because at four, especially because I don't do real watch lists yep. the day before. Yep. I'm playing first green day, so I always have a new play. Yep. Pretty much. If there's a play, it's going to be new. It's not something from yesterday. I've limited myself to not going long past day one. Yep. For the most part, unless I have some shares left over or, you know, it sets up for something in the afternoon. Sure. Um, that I can then bring into the next day. So, I mean, all my watches are done in the morning, so I need time. I need to be able to sit there. I watch my scan. You know, I'm looking at my new stream um, and I'm looking at the gappers. Yep. And the second the gappers hit with news, um, I don't like trading pre-market. Yep. I think I've placed three pre-market trades this year. Yep. Um, I really don't not like it. I'm not a big fan either. I, it's yep. just, I just can't do it. Yep. You yep. know, I, there are some friends I have that do well pre-market and stuff like that, but I, I just, need, you know, my, my thing is I just, I mean, I know a lot of people do well, but I've never seen anybody that did well over time. Right. You know? So but, that but, is what it is. Yeah. You know, it's in, not, in pre-market. I don't I mean, find it to be sustainable. Exactly. Well said. Yep. yep. Um, and then liquidity is not necessarily there, and then wacky stuff. Happens. Yep. Exactly. You know, <laughs> short selling too. Like yeah. you know that things do weird things pre-market. Uh, so for me, it, that's it. It's spending the couple hours going through process on new tickers. Yep. So gappers, um, I'm checking to see what sector they're in. If it's a hot sector. Yep. Or, Maybe looks like maybe a sympathy play from something else been running. What patterns have been working? Is it a gap in crap? Have they been reversing or do they just crap out all day? Yep. You know, that, all that kind of stuff is what goes into the morning for me. Um, and then I come up with a plan. But I don't like trading pre-market, so I like to wait 15 minutes anyways. Love it. That's, yep. I mean, it's, it's amazing <laughs> I, what that does. I, I tell you, I, 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 people get sick of, me hearing, hear, sick of hearing me say 9.45. I'm like, it's, it's I'm amazing. Like, it's, it's, it's one of the dumbest, most simplest things, but especially as a new trader. Oh, yeah. If you can just force yourself to wait till 9.45... I mean, I probably should do a better job collecting data on this, but it's just amazing, you know, because so many of the of the junk ones, they fail before 945. So they're just off your list. Right. You don't care about yep. them. The ones that survive till 945, that's yeah. the ones you want to focus on. Yeah, so. and the great part is, is that those 15 minutes, if it's in play, there's generally been volume. Yep. And it's generally now got a high day and low day to work yep. with. Yep. And that's what I work with. Yep. You know, after 15 minutes, I'm trying to work off the low a day long. Yep. If I'm long, I'm trying to work off the low a day. The further it gets from there, the smaller my size will be. Yep. Okay. And it's really kind of a simple game I play, like in the morning. Um, I'm looking for low of days. And it's just evolved through time from like trying to catch a morning spike to trying to catch something that's bottom because maybe everyone else who's been playing the first 15 minutes are panicking out. You know, a lot of stuff happens during the, especially the first couple minutes when all the market orders hit and yep, everyone yep. has all, you know. Um, that changed so much. If you can wait 15 minutes, then you will have levels with volume that yep. you get to use. Exactly. Important yep. levels. Yep. That's what they become instead of just chaos. And, and again, I like it just because of the fact that, again, if it's if it just, I, it, it always, I think people are always getting surprised when I say this. I'm, I'm glad when stuff's off my watch. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, it's like, if I got six stocks and three of them die, I'm like, good, good riddance, good riddance, because now I can focus on these three, and I think that's a great part of waiting that 15 minutes, because a lot of morning, a lot of pre-market spikers die, you know? yeah, and, they do. and then they're just off, you right. delete them off your watch list, and you're dialed in on the other three. But if so. you're trying to catch the spike, like, oftentimes you are going to be buying dead top, Yep, that's just what happens, yep. you know, they may spike a little bit, and then they get stuffed, yep. and then they may catch themselves later, but you're stopped out, so by the time the actual rip comes, you're gone, or yep. the squeeze, if it's, they're going to squeeze. Yep. Which is generally, that's what I look for. I'm looking for the low floats that are gonna squeeze, yep. possibly. Love it. And try to get in low on them. <laughs> yep. And the funny thing is, the more I do that, the less I care when they spike without me. Right. Uh, if I still have FOMO, I just, damn it, you know, right, like I was right. watching that. <laughs> but it's way different. It's not like uh, that gripping, like, uh, you end up doing dumb shit. Yep. You know, like I'm not going to be. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, and, and I, I'm assuming you'll agree, but you know, I always tell people, I'm like, you never, de that, that FOMO is a dragon you will never defeat. No. But you can cage it. You, you can know, cage you, you it. Know, and you can control it. Yes. But I've been in this 13 years. You've been in five, six years now. I mean, it's just, you're just controlling it. You'll, you're, never, that's you'll all. never kill just it. Just suppressing yeah. and yeah. trying to keep it down. <laughs> and for me, just the little hacks come with my rules. Yep. I, you know, I've put, I've boxed what I do. If I short, I don't short first green days because yep. I try to have my long bias first green days. Um, and if I'm short, I'm shorting first red day or the over send a gap down day. Beautiful. Uh, so. Just for safety purposes. I know like with my grip on price action, I, I can 
short parabolics and stuff like yep. that. But do I want to? All right. I personally, I don't. I don't want to be in that position where I'm going to blow my account up. Yep. Yep. You know, and 99% of the time something may work, but with short selling, you can see that that 1% of the time can destroy years of work for people. Yeah, or years, months, yeah. yeah. I mean, it just, it just, that, that's the biggest thing. Even if you're experienced and even if you try and get out, I mean, if you got too much size and these things move and move fast these days, I mean, you can be trying to get out and lose 50 cents or a dollar more right. a share than you right. intended. Exactly. So it doesn't yeah. matter. You could be like, I am, you know, I am the king of discipline. If you can't get out of 10,000 shares of that stock, in trouble. it gets ugly fast. Yeah. So it doesn't even matter. You can, you know, again, the viewer might be like, well, you just stop out, be disciplined. Well, you can't get out a lot of these things. When they, when they go, they go fast. Right. Yeah. And I, we've diverged a bit, but yep. <laughs> to get back to like the daily, that's yep, what yep, I'm doing. Yep. You know, the morning I'm looking at gappers, I go through the filings, I want to see where supply is. If I can locate additional supply filing, AKA dilution, um, that's a roadmap for me. Okay. That, yep. Like that's how I get through a list of 20 stocks. Right. Um, a lot of them are eliminated by the daily chart, but then the ones I get interested in, I look through filings to make sure that I am avoiding the worst danger, you know? And then I can kind of whittle down five or six stocks to maybe one, maybe zero. Right. Yep. You know, oftentimes through the summer, uh, no trading. Yep, that- Open my scan, close my laptop. Yep. I, I, this is something I've said for years, and lots of times people, you know, newer traders will look at me weird. I was, I've said for seven years, I'm like, my goal is zero to three trades. And they're always like, zero? What do yeah. you mean? You know, you're yeah. not under the PDT. Why aren't you trading every day? I'm like, because stuff doesn't fit my criteria. When I trade those, I lose, I get frustrated, messes up my mentality, and then I'm pissed off the rest of the day. And then invariably what happens, you make more trades and then it just, uh, the wheels completely come off. Yep. So yeah, that that is a huge thing is having that process to just say, well, nothing. You know, again, it's summer. They don't fit my timeline. Yeah. I'm going golfing. I'm going yeah. golfing. Yep. You yep. know, and that's what, it, and I'll be back at 12. Yep. Like that's power hour back in Phoenix, but sure. But that's it, you know. And and for me, it took a long time though to get to the period where I open my scan and know that though. Right. right. And often, you know, sometimes I'm wrong. Something runs without me. Sure. Uh, no big deal. Yep. You know, I'll hit the overextend the gap down day short maybe, um, or just let it do its thing. Yep. I my favorite thing is a runner. Uh, even if I don't catch it, that may produce additional runners. Yep. I love sympathy plays. I love, you know, momentum this year didn't start until BPT. It blew everyone out of the water. Yep. And then we saw every low flow in the world yep. for a week or two weeks go nuts. Yeah, trading. I mean, these were, that, was, that was back in the spring. I mean, right. we were 80, I mean, these stocks with 2 million float trading 80, 100 yeah, million shares a nuts. day. And that was all created by BBT. Exactly. Yeah, so. so, I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking for the gappers. Uh, I eliminate and what I can deem to be the worst ones concentrate on the couple, and then I have a few entries on first green days that I use, three or four, um, and if I don't catch those entries or whatever it may be, then I leave it alone. Yep. Leave it alone until the afternoon. I don't trade midday anymore at Beautiful. all. Love it, yep. Uh, 99.9% of the time. Um, that's just, that came from tracking. Yep. That came from going through my trades, and in 2017, uh, I forget the stat, 30 something percent of my trades that were lost in 2017 were midday trades yep. between you know midday. Yep. That was it. Uh, so that's it. If there's nothing to trade, um, then I'm going to do some other stuff. Work yep. on business. Work on go to the gym. Yep. Um, whatever hobbies I may have. Go spend time with my family. You know stuff like that. It's it's that's what's changed between grind mode 2017 and me now is I'm just way more selective. Yep. I know what I like, I know what I'm exactly where I'm most profitable, um, and I stick with that. Yep. You know, it's it's not rocket science. I, I say it's like the simplest, but just the hardest thing. See, and that, okay, so that's the, we'll, we'll wrap up here, and that's the last question is, and uh, the viewer may not get the answer they want, I'm guessing they probably won't, but do you think there's a better way, or do you just think you have to do it? No. Do you just have no. to, do you have to ruin your eyes <laughs> Spend all these hours, Screen make time, all yeah. these mistakes, and just and you know, and is 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 that just the way it's got to be? That's how it is. Yep. I'm pretty sure everyone <laughs> I've ever spoken to, no one has secret sauce. Yep. Like they do have the secret sauce that they've attained, but their secret sauce may not work for you. Right. You know, it's such an individual, subjective uh, thing that we do. It's not. It's just so hard. To, it's hard. That's why it's so hard to teach too. Yep. It's yep. like 
if there was one way to do it, then you could teach that exact one way. But yep. it's not the case. And you, you know? don't, you know, you just don't know what the people's mentality is. You don't no. you know a lot of it. A lot of it. You don't even, you, the what what are they dealing with in their personal life? You totally. Know, you know, how impulsive are they? You right. Know? And so there's just so many variables. Right. But. And that and for that reason, you have to go on the journey yep. alone. Basically, I mean, you can have mentors and stuff like that, but. It's all introspection. Yep. It's all like going deep, diving deep, and if you're not actually doing that, then you're probably screwed. That's the best takeaway, and that's yeah. what we'll wrap up with, is that that is something that everyone, you know, I've interviewed a lot of great traders out there, and that is the biggest thing is, if you make mistakes and you bury them, you'll never, you'll never evolve. You'll still be here, and hey, I've talked to plenty of traders three, four years later, and they're like, I'm making the same mistakes. And I'm like, okay, at the end of the day, do you review this stuff? I mean, do you actually sit down at the end of the week and say, what did I do? You know, what did I, did I stick to my plans? Did I focus on my setups? Did I track my data? Did I put in this time? Those are the people that make it. And you right. gotta, you know, it's that man in that mirror. You know, it's like, it's like you, if you ignore those problems, they're never gonna fix. 100%, so. yeah, that's, I mean, that's really powerful. It's really important that through the whole pro that's all I'm doing. And it's funny because that process of like trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with me <laughs> right. is essentially what it is. Like, yep, what yep. am I doing wrong? Now, what am I doing right, especially in the beginning? Even now, I mean, that will come too. Sure. I don't, you know, if you're gonna be hard on yourself, you should also be proud of yourself yep. when you do well. But um, yeah, it's it's crazy like that. It's one of those things that um, that you cannot replace the screen time. Yep. You know, I just, I agree. it, it yeah. just, uh, I wish there was a way but it's just such an individual thing. You have to, you have to figure out what hurts, what doesn't work for you. Yep. You know, um, and for me, that's it's actually leaked into every other part of my life. Right. Which that's what I. One of the things I've loved about trading is just the effects it's had on me as a person. Yep. You know, I, the way I go about life now is much different. Mm. It's just, I'm not like a. I don't know. Oh, I, trust I, me, I, I joke with like even my wife and kids sometimes. They'll be talking about what they're doing. I'm like, well, do you have a plan? <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? How are you going to approach this? And it's all just trading type stuff. No, it is. Yeah, it's like, it hey, is. you're 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 going going out somewhere. You know, what's your stop? What are you going to do if it doesn't work out? Risk. Yeah. What's yeah, the exactly. risk what's your risk management? Which yeah. was never. <laughs> I think kind of as males too. Just you sure. know, we are kind of wired to not look at the risk. Oh, sure. So much. Yep. Yep. Um, we are looking in the stars. Like, yep. what am I going to make? That was the, one of the biggest changes too. I mean, I know we'll wrap up, but for me going from like this, like how much are you making to like how much will I lose? Exactly. Yeah. Um, how many shares can I have if that's how much I'm gonna lose? And then working those numbers. Yep. Like, you know, managing your capital and size based on accordingly. Yep, yep, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's a, you know, I was it's tell people, I mean, like, you should know what your stop is before you enter. That's something that so many newer traders mistake they make is just that, you know, they start thinking about the stop after they're in. Oh yeah, for you sure. Know, so, so yeah. So anyway, well, thanks again, Ron. Awesome, it's great to again, see you. Thanks yeah, for having me, Tim. One of, one of the best guys in trading, one of the nicest guys in trading, and one of the hardest workers in trading. So definitely check out Roland Wolf, and thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure to comment below with any trading related question. We love answering your questions. Also, like and share with your friends and be sure to subscribe to be notified as soon as our next video hits. And if you're looking to expand your trading knowledge, don't forget to check out all of our other videos and be sure to click the trial below. Check out Stocks to Trade. I think it is one of the best, most rapidly advancing softwares out there. Be sure to check out our trial.